Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the question, how to tell if you have an impaired moisture barrier. I'm also gonna talk about what exactly the moisture barrier is, why it's important, why it might be impaired. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you how to fix your impaired moisture barrier. What exactly is the moisture barrier? The moisture barrier is a protective layer of the skin comprised of ceramides, lipids, and fatty acids. It is a shield to our external environment. It protects us from irritating substances and protects us from bacterial infections. It also keeps hydration in the skin. The moisture barrier is also referred to as the acid mantle because it is acidic. It has an acidic pH. And that is important for the function of the individual components of the moisture barrier that really keep everything in, in working order. I can almost guarantee you that at least at some point in your lifetime, you have and will experience an impaired moisture barrier. One of the most common causes of this is simply winter weather. The dryness that comes with winter sucks moisture out of the skin and then the cold temperatures break down the moisture barrier, leading to more water loss out of the skin. Also, if you walk outdoors, that cold wind can cause chapping of the skin, AKA windburn. Over bathing, bathing multiple times a day, using really harsh soaps and using hot water to cleanse the skin all can impair the moisture barrier just by stripping away the natural lipid components and that ultimately leads to more water loss from the skin. Of course, certain cleansers and soaps, they have a harsh alkaline pH. And remember I was telling you earlier that the pH of the moisture barrier, that acid mantle, is really critical to its integrity. Using too many skincare products is a very common culprit. And again, it's likely due to a combination of the fact that many skincare products exfoliate the skin, peeling away some of the lipid barrier, and many skincare products can, of course, disrupt the moisture barrier through disruptions in pH. Over exfoliating, using mechanical exfoliants, chemical exfoliants, uh, and products that you may not even realize are exfoliating the skin, sort of similar to using too many products, but this time overdoing it with trying to peel the skin. Many times people who are experiencing an impaired moisture barrier, because they have dryness and peeling, they attempt to remedy that by exfoliating, but that actually is the opposite of what you wanna do because you're just pulling away more of the lipid protective layer. Prolonged contact with sweat, saliva, or water on the skin will impair the moisture barrier. A classic example of this is if you have a child who is teething and they're drooling a lot, they will develop a lot of irritation around the mouth. That is a manifestation of an impaired moisture barrier. Now, if you have sweat or saliva or any bodily fluid under occlusion, that is definitely a setup for for an impaired skin barrier because not only do you have that prolonged contact with an irritating substance, it's under occlusion, not to mention you have friction that is further causing disruption to the moisture barrier. A classic example of this is diaper dermatitis in a child, a diaper rash, but we're now seeing it in the form of maskne, uh, irritation under the mask. Very similar to diaper dermatitis, you have saliva that gets trapped up under there, sweat, cosmetics, what have you, leads to a lot of irritation and that can flare acne. How do you know if you have an impaired moisture barrier? It's actually pretty obvious. You'll experience redness, irritation, and you may note that there's some itching and discomfort. And another common complaint when it comes to an impaired moisture barrier is that products burn or sting when you apply them. So you have an increased sensitivity to things that come in contact with the skin. You may notice that your skin appears more wrinkled. Wrinkles are more noticeable when you have an impaired moisture barrier because remember, the function of the moisture barrier is to help with hydration levels. As you lose water from the skin, it becomes dehydrated, wrinkles become more prominent. And acne can and often does get much worse when you have an impaired moisture barrier as a result of increased irritation and inflammation in the skin. Not only acne, but other skin conditions like rosacea, eczema, uh, will flare and become aggravated with an impaired moisture barrier. When your moisture barrier is impaired, the skin is more susceptible to infections. For example, young children who develop diaper rash, that diaper rash can become colonized with candida yeast and they can get little yeast infections on top of that. Uh, or you may be more predisposed to things like impetigo, uh, which is a bacterial infection on the skin when the moisture barrier is impaired. It's basically 
is set up because that moisture barrier is no longer able to fully protect you and keep keep that that those microorganisms out. So they take up shop there and colonize the skin. So that's that would be a secondary manifestation of an impaired moisture barrier. You know, you're probably coming here thinking about your face, but you've got skin all over your body. So I've already kind of alluded to the diaper area, although, you know, presumably you guys aren't thinking about that. But don't forget your hands. Uh, we see, uh, I would say, an impaired moisture barrier is probably more common, you're, you're probably gonna encounter an impaired moisture barrier on your hands on a day-to-day -day basis, more often than on your face, because we're washing our hands a lot and our hands are exposed to so many things in the environment, UV, uh, detergents, with not only hand washing, but doing dishes, housework, chores, touching papers that have inks and things that can be irritating cause disruption to the acid mantle. I mean, all sorts of things that you touch all day long. So those are the signs of an impaired moisture barrier and how you're gonna know that you are dealing with it. It's pretty obvious, actually. The skin's drier, it's more easily irritated, more uncomfortable. All right, now that you've figured out that you have an impaired moisture barrier, what do you do? Well, the first thing is to take a look at your skincare habits. How often are you cleansing the skin? Are you one of those people who typically cleanses multiple times a day? If so, take a break from doing that and just do it once a day. Make sure that you're cleansing with cool water, not scalding hot and not ice cold, just cool to lukewarm. Extremes of temperature are not friendly to the moisture barrier. And make sure that you choose a gentle cleanser. Don't use a, a cleanser intended to uh, you know, for oily skin, because those can be too dry in this situation. Even if you have oily skin at baseline, take a break from that. Choose a very gentle, kind of creamy, mild cleanser. Um, I'll link some down below in the description box. I have one here that I've talked about in several videos recently, the Aveeno Calm and Restore uh, Nourishing Oat Cleanser. This would be a great choice in the setting of an impaired moisture barrier. And you know, if you don't find that this is the best cleanser for you all the time, because you like something that you know, is a little bit more intense, that's fine. This is a temporary situation. I mean, you can, you can remedy this in a, you know, a few days actually. Um, so yeah, I would say switch over to that and more importantly, decrease the frequency. That's even more important. Decrease the frequency, make sure you're not scrubbing using an exfoliating pad or anything, just very gentle circular motion and rinse everything off in total. That's really important. Any cleanser left on the skin, further can impair the moisture barrier. Minimize the number of products that you use. I always emphasize this regardless of if the moisture barrier is impaired or not, but it just keeps things simple. And the more things that come in contact with the skin, the more opportunity there is for disrupting the skin pH and disrupting the acid mantle, ultimately leading to more water loss and irritation from the skin. So take a break from any serums, toners, Keep it very simple, stick to a very gentle cleanser, a moisturizer, and a sunscreen. I will list some down below in the description box. So keep the products minimal. Now, coming back to products though, when it comes to an impaired moisture barrier, this is a time to enlist something that is more heavy duty than just an ordinary moisturizing lotion or even cream. Something that is really going to act as second skin a balm or an ointment. I have videos on my favorite balms and ointments. I will list some down below, but a product that always serves well in this situation is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. This product is nice and not, like I said, it's, it's more, more occlusive than just a lotion or a cream. Uh, and it really puts the brakes on water loss this product really puts the brakes on transepidermal water loss and will allow recovery of the moisture barrier. Just kind of serving as second skin temporarily. It also has medecoside in it, which is derived from centella and that promotes healing. So it's really ideal for this situation. It's safe to use in children as well. Uh, and you know, if you, for example, if you have a young child who's dealing with diaper dermatitis, it's something you might want to try out. Uh, you can put it all over the face even if you have acne prone skin, do not fear this. As a matter of fact, you know, this is a great product, but in this situation, don't be afraid to just use uh, Vaseline, petroleum, petrolatum. The reason is that petrolatum is the number one best ingredient 
for reducing water loss out of the skin. And that's exactly what you need in this situation. It doesn't mean it has to be your everyday long-term moisturizer. You don't have to get on this slugging trend, which, you know, whatever. I mean, that's not necessary. This is to get you over the hump so that your skin can heal itself and then you know you can go back to your basic skincare routine. Uh, but don't be afraid to use petrolatum, aka Vaseline, or like the CeraVe healing ointment, something really greasy. Even if you have acne prone skin, you know, this is a situation where your skin needs help. Otherwise, the acne is gonna flare uh, regardless. So you really need to enlist something occlusive. A lot of people will think that they should use an oil in this situation. Uh, people are really fond of oils and you know making all these bold claims about different oils. But petrolatum tried and true for reducing transepidermal water loss. The reason oils are not particularly useful in this scenario is that they're mostly just emollients. Largely they just soften dry skin cell edges. They don't really do the same extent of work that petrolatum will do in terms of reducing water loss out of the skin and helping ultimately with healing. I suggest going with a balm or an ointment, something occlusive, ignore the oils. You know, they're not, they're really not going to get you over the hump. If part of your skincare routine includes an exfoliating acid, now's the time to take a break from it. This includes salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acids, namely lactic and glycolic and mandelic. Not that these are bad, I love these ingredients, I use them, but they do exfoliate and this is a time where we don't want that on board. Uh, again, it's not a permanent thing, it's just a temporary break till things calm down. It's also a good idea to you know, take a break from retinol or uh, prescription retinoids during this time. Again, it's not a permanent thing. No, it's not going to make the acne come back 10 times worse. No, when you resume, it's not gonna cause purging and all of these things that people you know, are unnecessarily worried about. It's just a short-term break so that your skin can recover. Or just a few days is really all, it really only takes a few days for things to, to start to turn a corner and then you can slowly get back to, back to your usual routine. So those are some tips on products, but don't forget one thing that can definitely help a lot when it comes to the function of your moisture barrier, especially in winter time, or if you live in a dry climate, is to have a humidifier in the bedroom. I will list down below my favorite humidifier, um, but this really can help by just increasing the ambient humidity. It really helps reduce those shifts in water out of the skin and can ultimately help in recovery of an impaired moisture barrier. When it comes to your hands, uh, consider definitely trying to wear gloves more often. Sun protective gloves when you're driving or outdoors. Uh, definitely always wear gloves when you're doing dishes or any kind of household chores so that you don't expose the skin to those harsh detergents and cleaning products that can strip away at the moisture barrier. As a side note, I see on TikTok this trend of, strip of laundry stripping. Have you guys seen this? And it terrifies me because I see people doing it with bare hands and the, the ingredients that they're, the compounds that they're using to do the laundry stripping are so harsh for the skin barrier. It's just a setup for, for dry hands. So yeah, always wear protective gloves when you're doing any kind of household chores. And, uh, and always, after you wash your hands, make sure you apply a moisturizer right away to, to the skin. It will really help in keeping things from getting out of hand, so to speak. Last tip is to consider doing uh, a wrap therapy. And what I mean by that is moisturizers are helpful, of course, but they're even better and will work a little bit better if applied and then occluded. So for example, if you're dealing with dry hands, a helpful thing to do is to apply like Vaseline all over your hands and cover them with white cotton gloves. Now, it's great if you can sleep like that and go to bed that way, but I understand it's not super comfortable, so just wear it as long as you can tolerate, but you will see results faster doing this. The other body sites where this is useful to do, I mean, you in theory could do it everywhere, but it's a little challenging to do it on your face. The other body site that you can do this on is like your extremities, your arms, your legs. The way to do it is to just grease up with, again, plain Vaseline and then take saran wrap and wrap the area and hang out that way for a little while. I mean, you see in spas and salons these like fancy body wraps that you can get. You can do the same thing at home and get really good results in terms of quick remedy of dry 
irritated inflamed skin by doing a similar thing with just saran wrap. Alternatively, you also can use some cotton pajamas like pants, uh, just put them on right away after you put the uh, ointment on, you know, the Vaseline on. That too will just kind of help uh, lock that into the skin better. That way you don't have to wear, that way you don't have to do the saran wrap thing. Uh, so that's another thing that you can do. So hopefully that helped clarify what the moisture barrier is, why it might be impaired, why it's important, how to tell if it's impaired, and what to do about it. Remember, your moisture barrier, aka the acid mantle, is critical for keeping bad stuff out and the good stuff, namely hydration in the skin. When the moisture barrier is impaired, that leads to dryness and dehydrated skin because it all comes down to the state of the moisture barrier. When the moisture barrier is not intact, your water retaining abilities in the skin are not very good and that's when the skin becomes dehydrated and that's when wrinkles become more noticeable, but it's also dry skin as well. So check the description box, I will list some great uh, balms, ointments, gentle cleansers, sunscreens, and of course humidifier that can help as well as gloves uh, for dealing with dry hands. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.